Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of Reconstructing Cave Story, Player Enemy Collisions. In this episode, we're going to be looking at what it takes to see if our bat is colliding with our player so that we can give our player some damage if this happens. We don't deal with the damage yet in this episode, but we're just, this is the first step towards that. So our solution is three parts. Um, the first part is the player damage rectangle, which is going to be one rectangle, and it's going to be the cl combination of K collision X and K collision Y for the player. Um, the second part is we're going to create a bat damage rectangle, which is just going to be a single point, and we can do this just fine using a rectangle, just have zero width and zero height. And then we're going to create a collides with method for our rectangle so we can determine if two rectangles are colliding. And the way I'm going to test this is I'm going to use the console. And so I'm going to go and for those of you using Linux, this doesn't really matter because it's easier for you. But if you go into for Visual Studio project, um, I think it's linker, maybe system. Yeah, system and set the subsystem to console instead of Windows. So I'll just do that again. That way we can see the console at the same time and see our printf statements and such. So yeah, let's start in the player class to create our damage rectangle. So I'll open up our player.h and our player.cc. And let's look at player.h first and just create a public method that returns a rectangle. Uh, we'll call it damage rect angle damage rectangle yeah to make it const um, make sure I'm including rectangle which I am so I'll switch over to player.cc and uh, implement this so I'll implement it below stop jump and I'll just scope it into player Okay, so what's damage rectangle going to be? It's going to be the combination of the K collision X rectangle and the K collision Y rectangle moved to our X and Y, posi X and y position. So it's going to be really similar to our top collision and bottom collision rectangles that we create in here. Or left, yeah, a lot like those. So I'm just going to build it and you will you can think it through. Rectangle and it's going to be X plus K collision X dot left uh, followed by y plus k collision y dot top and it's going to be the width of k collision x and the height of k collision y yeah so that's our damage rectangle I'll build to make sure that this is working and we're good. So the next step is to implement our bat collision. So I'll open, I'll close these player CC and player H. We don't need those anymore. And open up our first cave bat.h and first cave bat.cc. So if you remember, our bat's position is actually being set in our draw method. And we're not going to leave it here. We're going to instead store it, um, store things a little bit differently. So instead of storing our y position as a constant we're going to have a center y which we which we will store as an actual constant so what i mean by y being a constant is y doesn't ever change we never update y we just set this temporary variable y so i'm just going to create a constant that represents this center of uh, the bat's flight pattern so i'll add it up here it'll be const And then our Y position we can set in our update method. Okay, so we'll just say Y is equal to center Y plus this. And here's a good time to round this to game units, the standard sign. So units of type game because we were getting a warning about that down here somewhere, or a while ago we were. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's our update method. Then 
So now our y actually rep represents where our bat is. So we can use that up here in our draw method. Um, and then we can use it when we declare or create our um, damage, rect re damage rectangle, right? So rectangle, which we need to include. And this is gonna be called damage rectangle and no methods and it's const and it's just gonna return a rectangle given x and half of the width. And what's the width? Well, it's one tile divided by two. So units, tile two, game, one divided by two. And then y is the same. Um, and then a width and height of zero because it's a single point. And this will work out fine. I am going to make a, a half tile constant just because I feel like I've been using half tiles a lot. Um, no, I won't do that actually, so never mind. Don't worry about that. So this is all we need for our bat class. Let's jump into our rectangle class and make a collides with method. So that's rectangle.h. And I'll just put it down here at the bottom and I'll call it collides with. I'll take in a rectangle and it'll be const. So this is just gonna return, and this is just an algorithm, it's pretty ubiquitous. So I'll just kind of go through it pretty quickly. Um, you just wanna return, the, if the right is greater than or equal to the others dot left, and left is less than or equal to the other dot right, and the top is um, less than or equal to other dot bottom and the bottom is greater than or equal to the other dot top and this is just a way of determining hold on bottom this is a way of determining if two rectangles are colliding with each other um, if you draw it out you should be able to see that this is pretty um, self-explanatory yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. And then we can jump into our game class and actually test to make sure that this is working. So I'll go into game CC. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move our bat over a little bit so that this is easier to test. Just as I was making this episode, this I found this to be easier. So um, I'm moving it over to the right to seven tile units in the X position and K screen height divided by two plus one for the Y position. Um, so then I'll go into the update method and after we've updated the bat I'll check the collisions uh, I'm gonna update, I'm gonna move this map to the stop I we aren't really updating anything with this so I'm gonna leave it commented out but or just delete it even and then we can update stuff later when we actually have moving parts in the map, but I'll delete that for now. Anyway, um, so after this, we'll just say if, I'll put in a printf so we can see what's going on. Checking collisions. Uh, and then maybe something like do damage to quote but we won't do it yet. So this is gonna be in an if statement. So if bat dot or dash arrow um, damage rectangle dot collides with player damage rectangle. Um, am I missing a parenthesis? Yeah, so one more parenthesis. And that should be all we need to test to see if our collision is working. So I'll build this really quickly, make sure it all builds properly. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and I'll just run it now. So I'll bring the console over and our app. And where's the bat? The bat looks to be going to be way too far down. So I'm going to look at that really quickly and fix that before we check collisions. 
So I'll open up firstcavebat.cc and see what's going on. Okay, I see it right away, an update method. Hopefully you guys see it too. This should be y equals center y plus units game to tile or tile to game. So that should fix that. I'll build and run again. Okay, yeah, I can see that the bat is flying more correctly now. So I'll bring the console over to you so we can look at that. Just kind of line it up. Okay, so now I'm going to go over. He shouldn't be colliding yet because we're not touching the bat center. Okay, but now he should collide. And it looks like he's doing, he is doing the collision because we can see over here that we are seeing a do damage. All right, perfect. So that concludes this episode. And the next episode we'll be working on probably something to do with either health or some kind of reaction to doing damage, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, in the meantime, happy developing.